Welcome to the news today, your primetime destination news, newsmakers, talking points. Today we have a special from one of the battleground states of this country in general election 2024, the state of Tamil Nadu, where we will ask the big question on a day when the Prime Minister is doing a road show in Chennai. Can the BJP breach a Dravida fortress or will Tamil Nadu remain an India bastion? Is it going to remain BJP Mukt? Also, among others, we'll have Dayanidhi Maran taking on Anna Malai, one of our battles. All the newsmakers will join us, including Chief Minister M.K. Stalin. I'll speak to all of them as I travelled to Chennai earlier this week. But first, as always, it's time for the Nine Headlines at Nine. Prime Minister Modi continues with his big push in Chennai, holds a mega roadshow in the state of what Tamil Nadu this is his seventh visit to the southern state in just the last two months. Major setback for Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. Delhi High Court dismisses his plea, says his arrest is not illegal, claims there is sufficient evidence to prove money laundering charges against him. Kejriwal will now move the Supreme Court next. No relief either for KCR's daughter in the Delhi Liquor Gate probe. Delhi court extends K. Kavita's judicial custody until April 30, 23rd. She cries foul, says opposition parties being targeted. Mahavikas Agadi seat sharing pack sealed in the crucial state of Maharashtra. Congress concedes Sangli seat to team Uddhav that gets the maximum seats of 21. Congress to fight on 17. Sharad Pawar's NCP from 10. Old Body directs Central Board of Direct Taxes to probe Union Minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar. This after the Congress complained against a mismatch of income details in Chandrasekhar's election affidavit. India Today had reported this yesterday. A Trinamool versus Central Agency fight. Peaks, TMC holds a 24-hour dharna at a Delhi police station. Abhishek Banerjee says they will now move the Supreme Court against the NIA. Election Commission cracks the whip on sexist netas. Whole body sends show cause notice now to Congress's Randeep Surjewala for his alleged derogatory comments against BJP's Emma Malini. Day ahead of a Supreme Court verdict, Patanjali's Baba Ramdev and its MD Acharya Balakrishna tender an unconditional apology to the court for misleading advertisements. Dalal Street continues to bounce up, touches a new record. Sensex hits an all-time high by crossing 75,000 for the first time. Nifty also had a fresh high of over 22,000 pounds. But our top focus is on the biggest battle of round one of the 2019 Lok Sabha elections. On April 19, Tamil Nadu's 39 seats and one of Puducherry will be voting. And the battle lines are drawn. Today, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was in Chennai at a road show. And the battle is here a three-way one. The DMK, the ruling party that has 38 of the 39 seats, led by Chief Minister M.K. Stalin, Halani Sami's AIA DMK, a party fractured after the death of Jailalita, but now still fighting on. And the BJP, which is hoping to make its first major breakthrough in the southern Dravida Citadel. These are the three major players. And as you can see, the Prime Minister's roadshow in Chennai, a bastion of the DMK, clearly suggesting the BJP is also keen to run an aggressive campaign in the state. Now, why are we focusing on Tamil Nadu? Let's tell you. It's the largest South Indian state, sends 39 members to Lok Sabha, one then from Puducherry makes it 40. The Dravidian parties have dominated the state politics. The India bloc, the DMK Congress Alliance, is looking to make a sweep here. There's a big push by Prime Minister Modi in Tamil Nadu, and the NDA has to win seats here, some say, to meet its ambitious 400 seat target. That's the reason why we are looking at Mission Tamil Nadu so closely of all the parties. I was in Chennai this week recording for elections on my plate, spoke to most of the major players and I want to start with the DMK, the ruling alliance 
where M.K. Stalin gave me a rare, if short, interview. And then I camp went on the campaign trail with Dayanidhi Maran, former union minister. Later, we'll be speaking to Anna Malai of the BJP and E. Palani Sami of the AIDMK. Listen in first, though, to the DMK. M.K. Stalin, the chief minister of Tamil Nadu and the leader of uh, the DMK, uh, because he's traveling across uh, the state. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Stalin. Welcome. Uh, how confident are you of last time the DMK Congress Alliance won all 40 seats, including Puducherry? Uh, you only lost one, 39 out of 40. How confident are you this time? This time also, 40 to 40. Definitely. You are you're confident of 40 to 40? Yeah, definitely, definitely. What is the main issue in this election, Mr. Chikman? You are not worried about BJP's rise, Modi factor in. There is no Modi factor in Tamil Nadu. Modi, when the I guess, Tamil Nadu got our, our local party, the DMK plus, the election again, like plus, and when the border it got, police will it got. So, I am saying that plus point, plus point, plus point. Yeah. <laughs> but who is your main opponent then? AI DMK versus DMK, not BJP. AI DMK is the main. Opposition. BJP is a drama. The second year over the Anglo-Kula port. They are attacking you, the others are attacking you on dynasty and corruption. These two issues. Yeah. They are saying family Raj in DMK on corruption. Huh. How do you respond? The Makal Katharina and the CAG report and I put them the three arm. If you want the Russian bond, I then have a good work for a lot of children three arm. Yarala Marti for my young three arm. You are with India Alliance. Yeah. Are you confident India Alliance can come to power in uh, the center? Definitely. <laughs> and if they come to power, who will be your Prime Minister? No, no, no decision for no, now, no, only no, afterwards. After. Uh, Mr. Chief Minister, I wish you all the very best. I know that you have a very busy schedule, but that you have given us these couple of minutes. We'll wait and see if Tamil Nadu plays a role in national politics. Your late father, Karnanidhi ji, used to play a big role in Delhi. Yeah. Do you want to play a role in Delhi or you're happy here in Chennai? <laughs> both. Huh? both. Both. You want to play a role yeah, in Delhi yeah. and Chennai? Yeah, both. Bringing people together. Yeah. Okay. Thank we'll you. wait and see. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you. Thank you. Central Chennai, hoping to get re-elected. You've been three times MP here. Is it more difficult this time? Your opponents say anti-incumbency. Is there anti-incumbency? Probably talking about anti-incumbency for Bodhi. So that's what we say because basically this time we are more confident. Because the last time uh, we won was the three lakh vote difference. This time we will not will win more than three lakh. So I know this is your fortress. Yes. And, and I met Mr. Stalin who said that there is no Modi factor. But you've been in Delhi. Mr. Modi is coming again and again to Tamil Nadu. Is there a Modi factor that we that yes. you should be worried about? We are, we'll be, we are so happy that Modi is coming to campaign. Right. The more he campaigns here, our margins will increase. 
The hatred people have for him. That's what are you underestimating the Modi factor? No, not at all. Mr. Modi could be increasing his popularity. He has been raising not Tamil Nadu all. issues. No, 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 no. He was seen in an interview in a Vesti, the Sengal at Parliament. He's coming to temples in Tamil Nadu. You're saying it has no impact? All, all is drama. All is drama. All is fair and fixed. All this dramatics, theoretics, theoretics doesn't work in Tamil Nadu because people look into it. When we had floods, he never visited Chennai. He, then he came twice. He came twice, but never even so he went and see the affected people. Tutuvi was in town, was, uh, was flooded. He never came there. But he went twice there, he went to Tutukudi. To, for another function. But, but Mr. Marat, the two issues he raises, family Raj in the DMK and corruption. He says DMK is a corrupt family Raj party. Right now we are only asking you, why is there no inquiry on CAG? 7.5 lakh crores. There's an abuse there. The CAG report has very clearly said on the highways, there, on the highways, there's been what, 240 kilo crores per, per kilometer. No, but so one but, of your ministers is in jail, Santil Balaji. Several of your ministers are accused of disproportionate assets. Are you saying it's not an issue? Listen, everyone knows Modi's alliance with CBI, ED, and income tax is a farce. People do understand that moment they come and join Modi or BJP, they become pure. Because washing border Nirva takes place. I will ask you, 25 people cases were there. Or 25 people, 22 cases have been just going on dead. Two people have, what happened to Praful Patel? There was a case on Praful Patel. But of course he's supporting Modi. Praful Patel is clean, clean. Praful Patel is your friend. He's my friend. Right, right now he's my political adversary. Right, what happened to uh, Ajit Pawar? Ajit Pawar had a rant scam. 1,200 crores. Now he's a finance minister in Mumbai with the BJP. What is about that? What about family Raj? You know, the fact is, uh, Karunanidhi, Stalin, Udainidhi, the Maran family, all of you are family no, Raj. Basically, we all say is that DMK is, Tamil Nadu is a big family for us. We, be, we believe in that. And one thing is, people trust us. Since you have no other trick to attack us, we are trying to do this. No, but the ideology has become the family. Listen. Family, private, no, limited companies. No, nothing, nothing like that. Look at it. What about uh, Jay Shah? What about Jay Shah? See, well, there, 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 it. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 you control. That is okay. Jay Shah can be there. there is a, you don't say anything about that? No, he's in cricket. I'm talking about politics. So, politics, one family. What about Anurag Thakur? He doesn't come from a family. Uh, Anurag Thakur? No, but you, you no, are what, what, no, 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 When you point one finger, five, four fingers are pointing back at you. So let's go to something else. No, Mr. Maran, the fact is that you all were a Dravid party that represented an ideology. Has the ideology been taken over by family? When people decide to elect us, we became representatives of people. Family doesn't matter. People trust us, people want to be with us, people respect us, and people trust us. Do you think that though Tamil Nadu this time will see a uh, you know, when you go to North India, you can see the BJP as a dominant force of a Hindutva force. When Udainidhi raised the Sanatan Dharma issue and spoke against Sanatan Dharma, it seemed that the BJP had said that you are an anti-Hindu party. All we are and the India to... Alliance is anti-Hindu. All we are trying to say that we need equality. No one is superior by birth. No one is downtrodden by birth. That is what we be. We, we, we are for equality. Are you anti-Hindu? I'm a secular person. Did I ever say, why do you are putting words into me? Are you anti-Hindu? No, when? I, when, I, I, no, no, when I, 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 did Udaini say, say anti Why are you putting words into me? anti dharma No, we ask his people. When a particular thing says that I'm inferior by birth, I don't accept that. I feel everyone is equal by birth. So you are not there's no, you are not superior because you are born in upper caste. I'm not inferior because I'm born in lower caste. That doesn't happen in the Periyar land. So you are going on against hierarchical Hindutva. You are saying we Hinduism not, cannot be hierarchical. Do not discriminate me by birth. Because I born as a sutra doesn't mean I'm lower. Everyone is equal. What is the main issue then in Tamil Nadu this time? Tamil Nadu is that we want development. We are against We do not try to partisan people in the name of religion. Because you are a Muslim, you should know you should be oppressed. That's not the way we why we We feel secularism. Everyone is free to practice their religion. We, everyone is free to pursue the education. The BJP calls it appeasement. What you say secularism, they say is appeasement. That is BJP. 
that's what they do. They do not allow anyone to get educated. They all, everyone, they say, you have to do what your father did. You should not change your profession. But the upper caste people can learn English and go and become superior and make others feel inferior to what? That doesn't happen. We want in Tamil, the Dravidian model talks about we, everyone is equal. Everyone should be given equal opportunity for education and the whole entire society should grow. Has that Dravidian model, model enriched a few people like the Marans, like the Karnanidhi family and the majority of people have not been enriched? See, probably the fear in the upper caste is that the lower caste people are now coming up. Today we have here in Tamil Nadu the highest rate of education. People are pursuing higher education. Right now we are the, one of the best states in India because the Dravidian one. We made our women study. We never said, we never differentiated to say, because you're a woman, you should not study. You should study. You should are pursue you make, career. Are you making also this a battle between Delhi and Chennai? You you don't want a neat exam for Tamil Nadu. You are saying Delhi is oppressing Chennai. Are you trying to divide North versus South? Do, do you know something? Is there a North versus South divide? Do, do, you, know, do you know something? In, earlier in uh, Tamil Nadu, or you know, in, you have to learn Sanskrit to pursue education, to medical education. You did that in the 60s. One event, we came and said, why do you need Sanskrit to pursue your education, medical education? Is there a north-south divide? Are you playing a card of north versus south, I, Delhi versus no, Chennai, okay, center am, versus Tamil Nadu? I believe in Tamil Nadu. I believe in Dravidian model. I believe in Periyar. I believe in Anna. I believe in Kalingar. I believe in Sali. So basically, we are very, very clear. What you feel cannot be applied here. What we we, we, th we threat the same for the entire country. What about when what, the... We have a program which is called when... Liberate Women, which is now being followed through all the state, other states. When the BJP raises issues like Kacha Thibu and says DMK gave up an island to the Sri Lankans. Oh, they are stupid narrative. They always want to bring in a narrative. All the medias are supposed to put their narrative because they're scared. Every media is not free. Just now, for the first time, I see the Delhi media come to meet the opposition. I, they love the, I no, always no, ask no, questions no, of no, everybody. I, I, I'm not generalizing. All the media in you Delhi are petrified of Modi. Not they, Rajiv Sarte, no, I know. I generalize. I have to generalize. See, I'm, you, are, you are generalizing me. I'm generalizing. But here, we are very clear. There is one fear some say of Anna Malai, the rising star of the BJP. Very easy, the rising star. Who's that? Anna Malai, Who's BJP that? president, oh. Coimbatore. The Joker. You're talking about the Joker. Are you, are you, are you underestimating? Are you underestimating? Under, are you Anna overestimating? He's a lame duck. Okay, final question to you. 40 seats on offer between Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. Are you also saying all 40 or are you being a little overconfident? This time there's a fight. AIDMK is also in the race. Palani Sami is strengthening his party. D uh, BJP is growing. No longer quite a clear race for you. It's not a... Rajiv, it's 40 out of 40. Yeah. You want to bet? Yeah. You want to bet? Huh? You want to bet? Sir, one minute. One minute. I don't have as much money as yeah, that. Come on. You want to bet? Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah. I want... You're talking like Nirvana now. You're talking like Nirvana Sita Ramana. Okay. Okay. I want, okay, I want to ask you one okay. final question. I know you're a fan of cricket. Yeah. And your brother Kalanidhi owns uh, 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 IPL franchise, which is Sunrisers Hyderabad. Who's going to win, CSK or Sunrisers? I'm always for CSK. Always for CSK. Yeah. Okay, good luck. Thank you very much. Okay, so there you heard a rather combative Dayanidhi Maran and a quietly confident M.K. Stalin. What of the other side? There is one leader who's emerged as a visible face and a voluble face is the BJP state president K. Annamalai contesting from Coimbatore, which is where I caught up with him on the campaign trail as my colleague Pramod Madhav did with E. Palani Sami of the AIDMK, a party that still has a considerable vote support base in Tamil Nadu. But first, listen in to Tamil Nadu's BJP man of the moment, K. Annamalai. We are with the BJP's man of the moment, its star face and Coimbatore candidate and party president K. Annamalai. You are quite a rock star at the moment. You are making news uh, in the media, on the internet. 
the Prime Minister is praising you. The big question, of course, is can all this interest convert into votes? Honestly, a lot of hard work, sir. Over the last many years, the party has put in a lot of hard work. We hope and pray that the Prime Minister's last 10 years of good governance and the image that PM Modi currently enjoys in Tamil Nadu mm -hmm. and the party's organizational strength. Of course, we know we are taking on the Dravidian party. is very powerful party. It's money power, muscle power. But I believe that this time we got a good chance and we should deliver this time. No, so when you say deliver, is it increase in vote share? Is it about seats? Is it about just creating a buzz around Annamalai and the BJP? At this time, we are very confident that uh, increase in vote share will definitely 100% happen, no doubt about that. And uh, seats also that the conversion will happen, especially in South Tamil Nadu, in the western region and in Chennai. And we are very hopeful that uh, uh, BJP on our own, this is the very first election that we are going to open our account. And uh, vote share would be a very phenomenal disproportionate increase in vote share, you will see. Now, when you say phenomenal disproportionate vote share, what are you targeting? 20%. 20% vote share. And how many seats out of... 39 of Tamil Nadu, 1 of Puducherry. Seats, I really don't want to get into that because I hope and pray Tamil Nadu, anything can happen. And it's a state where a swing can happen any which ways. Mm -hmm. But I'll not get into the numbers game, but it will be a very, 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 very good number. But I believe the conversion will happen. Slowly and steadily, we are gaining. The reason I'm asking you this is when I meet the Dravida party leaders, they say Anna Mala is a bubble. <laughs> uh, that, uh, you know, we don't take him seriously. The DMK says our main opponent is the AI DMK. You people in the media are making Anna Mala to be so big. It's very funny in this election, many DMK leaders in the stage. Hmm. Just yesterday, uh, I saw Mr. Eva Velu. He was on the stage, a senior DMK minister. Hmm. He was appealing to the ADMK to work hard. Please don't make BJP to come second in certain constituencies. He was assuming that uh, DMK will win in that particular constituency, Tiruvannamalai. He was making an appeal to ADMK from the stage as a DMK minister. Please work hard. BJP is coming number second in Tiruvannamalai. Please work hard. So you see in Tamil Nadu a very peculiar situation in 2024 where both the Dravidian parties are canvassing and campaigning for each other. I haven't seen this situation. I never thought I will see this situation in this election. They are seeing it differently. They believe that the anti-DMK vote will get split between the BJP and the AI-DMK and advantage DMK. In fact, they were more worried if there was an AI-DMK alliance in which the BJP was a part. Sir, if there is an AI-DMK and BJP alliance, the DMK will say BJP is a nobody. And they will contribute very little to the alliance. If there is no alliance and BJP and ADMK are standing alone, then the DMK will say, oh, they will split our votes, so we are going to win. So DMK is living in their own world and they believe uh, it's a very hyped up world. The kind of anti incumbency you see in the ground is so high. Tamil Nadu, sir, one thing we have to clearly understand, the Dravidian parties on their own, it's 20%, 20% vote share. On their own, they have 40% vote bank very readily available. Yes. The rest, 60% is swing vote. The swing vote will always go. This time, they know Modi is going to come back to power. And they want to go with a candidate whom they think can contribute for Tamil Nadu's growth story, party that can contribute to Tamil Nadu's growth story. I don't think the prediction that DMK, the model of 1990-2000, is going to happen now. You, you just mentioned Prime Minister Modi. He's going to make half a dozen trips to Tamil Nadu uh, in the last two months alone. Is this a serious effort by the Prime Minister to try and project his image? in Tamil Nadu versus the Dravidian identity. The Dravidian identity has dominated this state's politics. So is it Hindutva represented by Prime Minister versus Dravidianism represented by these two DMK, uh, by the two Dravida parties? So this election 2024 in the state of Tamil Nadu has growth politics, <coughs> development politics, one side which is our alliance. Opposite side is corruption, family-based uh, ideology and a declining ideology. So I'm not getting into Hindutva versus Dravidian ideology. I'm talking about pro-development versus a Dravidian model that is failing. They will turn back and say, look, here is Anna Malai, you are attacking everyone. Your weakness is that you attack each and every party. That's why AIDMK and Palani Sami want to have nothing to do with you. No party wants to align with you because you are a loose cannon. You, you call everyone corrupt. So, you say everyone is dynastical. So you mean to say Patali Makal Kachi is not a big player. You mean to say Tamil Nadu Congress is not a big player. Our alliance is the most formidable alliance. Now look at ADMK. Who are their alliance partners? Each of this party chose to align with BJP-led NDA after careful consideration. They all had a choice. Patali Makalkachi had a choice. Four ADMK ministers were camping outside the PMK Ramadasji's gate for one week. They were camping literally outside his gate. Why did PMK come to our side? Because Same. you wanted these small caste-based parties for your own caste politics. You say that you are campaigning on development, but you are tying up with all the small caste-based parties. But why did ADMK chose to quote them? My, my counter question is, 
every party quoted every party but finally where they chose to align is they see a vision they see a growth story they believe 2024 nda will deliver in tamil nadu that is why people like ramada such senior leaders they chose to come with bjp this time but is 2024 about who will be the opposition who will be the challenger to the dmk in 2026 you are not fighting to win the election you are fighting for the opposition space you are hoping post jailalitha ai dmk has declined and you want to capture that space it's you versus palani sami in a way no sir i will not fool a very senior journalist like you you read everything i am not i am i am not dumb enough to say anything as an answer to you and get away with it 2024 of course in tamil nadu for bjp is to emerge that challenger space and 2026 we believe we will definitely claim our share to the throne and we believe we got enough leaders and we believe our governance model by the time would be matured enough to present to the people and 2024 is all about winning seats all about increasing our vote share at the same time we want to use 2024 to get to that spot where people see a fight between DMK and BJP over the next two years. You know, I've been hearing this though for the last two decades. BJP is going to rise. BJP is going to emerge. And yet, Dravida politics is very, very durable. You're accusing them of corruption, dynastical politics, but they keep winning. And they have a very strong organizational network. You cannot deny that. They won 39 out of the 40 seats last time in Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. They are not going to disappear overnight. I'm not saying they're disappearing overnight, sir, but you are looking at an election where after five years, there is a real wake-up. There is no Karnanidhi, there is no Jailalitha now. There is a clear wake-up and the absence of leadership is clearly felt in the ground. The mishandling, Chennai floods, Southern floods, the governance model that DMK propagated is far removed from the way a Kalingar Karnanidhi ji used to govern. And current Chief Minister, uh, respected MK Stalin ji, doesn't have any grip on the administration. So ideology is important, along with it, leaders are important. So when the leadership is not there, ideology cannot sustain on its own. Tamil Nadu DMK, the present problem, mm -hmm. no leader is there to sustain the ideology. But the ideology, they say, is anti this sana, san, the, the kind of Hindutva politics that is hierarchical, that is uh, that divides people along to along caste. They say it's anti-Brahminism. I asked them yesterday. They said our politics is anti-Brahminism. We are not anti-Hinduism. We are anti-Brahminism as represented by Hindutva of the BJP. This is what they said. They have their own uh, invention, own model of Sanatana Dharma. But let us see the 2024 elections, sir. You will see which way the votes are getting transferred and shifted. They believe, oh, by attacking Brahmins, the other group will uh, consolidate and they will always go through the minor uh, OBC votes and minor other votes, smaller cause, which is not adequately represented. But this election, the Sanatana Dharma is so heavily re resonated. Right now we had uh, uh, food uh, in, with the workers' house. And... Uh, the person belonging to that house is a local temple priest. And people believe only the Brahmins are priests in Tamil Nadu. It's a very mistaken assumption. The mistake that DMK is trying to make in a, in a social media age, they can't keep fooling saying that Sanadana Dharma means anti-Brahmanism. That is what we are trying to say. People are, people are intelligent enough to assume, to read. You know, this corruption and dynasticism, these are your two points, calling cards, yours and Prime Minister's. They say people are voting for us. If that is the case, DMK has never stood an election alone in their lifetime. And because they know if DMK is standing alone in an election, their vote share will come below 20%. So they want Congress. They want all the caste-based parties. Mm -hmm. Right from 1967, they had communists. Mm -hmm. Now the same question I would like to put to my DMK friends. If you believe our ideology is intact, this is the oldest available political party currently in India. 1949, the party started. Mm. Till now, they haven't gone through a single election on their own. In fact, they had a minority government. From 2006 to 11, the government was in a minority. Sir, so DMK is like a pack of cards. They balance with the caste-based outfits. They balance with the Congress party, with the minority votes and everything together. You just remove one piece, the whole building will collapse. It's a matter of time. Uh, the Kachatibu issue. They say this Kachatibu issue created by Anna Malai to create a buzz because they don't have any real issues on the ground. These are not the real issues of the people. The real issues are our welfareism versus these uh, media issues, as they call them. 100% welfare issue is a real issue. Nobody is denying it. Development is a real issue. Corruption is a real issue. But don't you think Kachatibu is not a real issue? You gifted an island in 1974. Stalinji very audaciously in February he climbs the stage in Ramanathapuram. He gives a speech about Kachatibu. He says his father was not consulted. And he is angry. Now we have to get back. He tells a lot of false stories to the people, to the fishermen population in Ramanathapuram in the first week of February. After that, I had to put an RTI, get the document, release it to the public just to say that these people are hand in glove in gifting Kachati. It's a 50 year old issue. Let it be a Why, it's not an issue sir. of the future. Sir, if today, How does it, you should be getting back the island if at all, so that the fishermen's rights are yes, protected. BJP officially, one year back, we have made an official statement on this that we want Kachati to be back. A committee led by Pondra Radha Krishnanji has made external affairs minister Jay Shankar.
here on record we have given a, 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 a representation from BJP Tamil Nadu that we want Kachiti back because that is the only way you can solve the Tamil Nadu fisherman issue. So, yeah, the other charge is that all of this is happening at election time. Prime Minister comes five times to Tamil Nadu at election time. Where was he when there were floods in Tamil Nadu? Where is he when the need students are committing suicide? Where is he when the real issues of Tamil Nadu need to be discussed? We don't have the Prime Minister. So they, they are playing it as regional card versus Delhi. South versus North. If the DMK believes for every single issue, PM has to come to Tamil Nadu, let them give the government to us. I will make Prime Minister to stay here for 365 days. Prime Minister has deputed Amit Shah ji. He has deputed Rajnath Singh ji. Within 24 hours of Chennai flood, there was a representation from Central Cabinet, such a senior minister who came, chaired a meeting with MK Stalin ji. Prime Minister spoke over phone to MK Stalin ji. Two days later, MK Stalin ji attending an India Alliance meeting. Since he is in India Alliance meeting, he wanted an appointment. Late an appointment was given. Where did Prime Minister fail in his duty, sir? No, no. They are saying Prime Minister should be here on the ground, right? You know, address Tamil Nadu's concerns when when really the crisis is there, when Chennai is under floods, please don't come only at election time. This when, is their constant... Sir, when Chennai is under flood, whatever the central government has to do, we have done. Okay, as I end, I want to ask you, how many seats? You will see double digits, sir. Which is IIM, IPS. You give it all up to do this. Worth it or not? Or do you sometimes, when you go to sleep at night, say, where am, you know, what am I doing? All the burden of lifting the BJP is being put on my shoulders. It's a real pleasure, As we sir. say in Hindi, Bali ka bakra. <laughs> it's a real pleasure, sir. Very honest people, very wonderful people. Every day I spend my time with them. I know it's hard work. Nothing is going to happen tomorrow morning. I am in it for the long run. We are building very able leaders. As we speak now, we have, built, we have put our roots in this village. So every village we are putting our roots. It's a long journey, sir. Nothing is going to happen tomorrow morning. But you have to bear a lot of pains. Short term, attacking, ecosystem, media, Tamil Nadu doing politics is not that easy. But so I hope long term it is worth it. So you are not a T20 player, you are a test player. <laughs> you want to play for the long match. Yeah? You are your, not a Chennai Super Kings T20 player, you want to father, play. How your father was a good test player, trying to be in the same footpath like him. Sir. One other criticism that they make is Anna Malai will play politics of Hindu versus Muslim, which is not the politics of Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu is inclusive politics. You all want to make it exclusive. What will you tell them? Sir, if Tamil Nadu, the Dravidian parties, I am more secular than them. I host the Iftar party as BJP president. Have you seen a BJP president hosting an Iftar party? Prime Minister does not host Iftar no, no, parties. No. Prime Minister respects every single community. Is your party taking all communities together? We are taking all communities together. One thing we have to understand, this is the last trump card with the DMK to say, we are anti this, we are anti that, we are, we are not that. That is also getting broken, which will get broken in 2024. No, because Coimbatore is a city, as you know, sensitive. There were blasts here that took place 20 years ago. This is a city where there is a large Muslim population. Will you be able to take along all people? That is the charge always against the BJP that the Dravida party makes. Taking, this is an exclusive party, not an inclusive party like them. We are them. taking everybody along. 2022, there was an ISIS packed suicide blast. NIA has done three charge sheets, arrested 13 people. The state government till till now calls it a cylinder blast. Is this appeasement or is my politics appeasement? You tell me, sir. DMK shouldn't do appeasement politics over a dead body and over a blast. That is what they are continuously doing, including the 2022, the suicide blast that happened in Guayana. Okay, you will have iftar parties, you will celebrate Diwali and you will celebrate Christmas. Yes. Okay. Why not, sir? Okay. Andam Malai, thank you very much for sharing your time and we wish you well thank as you, you go on your roadshow, which we will track you, for now. Thank you. Thank you. நிறுவேட்டுக்கிறேன் அழுத்தத்தைக்கு நிதியை பெற்று எய்ம்ஸ் மருத்துவமனை கட்டுவதற்கு தவறிவிட்டார்கள் எப்பொழுது பார்த்தாலும் மத்திய அரசு குறை சொல்லியே காலத்தை தள்ளிவிட்டார்கள் ஒழிய ஆக்கப்பூர்வமான பணியை அவர்கள் நாடாளுமன்றம் செய்யவில்லை அதனால் இந்த ஐந்து ஆண்டுகளும் 
தள்ளி போய்விட்டது எய்ம்ஸ் மருத்துவமனை கட்டுவது இவர்கள் ஆட்சிக்கு வருவதற்கு முன்பு பெரிய பிம்பத்தை ஒரு மாய் பிம்பத்தை வெளியிட்டார்கள் மக்கள் கோபத்தில் இருக்கின்றார்கள் தமிழகத்தில் ஒரு எழுச்சி பார்க்க முடியாது திராவிட முன்னேற்ற கழகம் மூன்றாண்டு கால ஆட்சியில் விலைவாசி உயர்வு சட்ட ஒழுங்கு சீர்குலைவு பல்வேறு துறைகளில் லஞ்ச லாவண்ய ஊழல் தலைவிருத்து ஆடுகின்ற காரணத்தினால இந்த ஆட்சி வீழ்த்த வேண்டும் என்று மக்கள் கருதுகின்றார்கள் மக்கள் இன்றைக்கு இந்த ஆட்சியில் கடும் கஷ்டத்துக்கு உள்ளாகின்றார்கள் நாடாளுமன்ற நாடாளுமன்ற தேர்தலை சந்தித்தேன் அப்பொழுது ஒரு கூட்டணி அமைக்கப்பட்டிருந்தது வேண்டுமென்றே திட்டமிட்டு திரு ஸ்டாலின் அவர்கள் ஒரு தவறான விமர்சனத்தை தொடர்ந்து வைத்து பல வாக்குறுதிகளை எங்கள் ஆட்சிக்கு வந்தால் செய்வோம் நாடாளுமன்றம் வெற்றி பெற்றால் செய்வோம் என்று ஒரு பொய் பிரச்சாரத்தை முன்வைத்து அதன் மூலமாக அவர்கள் வெற்றி பெற்றார்கள் இந்த முறை அப்படி அல்ல மக்களுக்கு அதன் மீது இருக்கின்ற நம்பிக்கை போய்விட்டது நாடாளுமன்றத்தில் அனைத்து ஜனாதிராவிட முன்னேற்றம் எங்களுக்கு கூட்டணியும் தமிழக தலைவர் பற்றி இந்த இடம் ஆண்டு செய்து கொண்டு நாற்பது இடங்களும் வெற்றி பெறுவோம் இடைத்தேர்தல் விழா போட்டியும் அனைத்து ஜனாதிராவிட முன்னேற்ற கழகத்தால் வெற்றி பெறும் Okay, that leads me to our big questions on Tamil Nadu. You've heard from all the key players. My big questions: Can the BJP really breach the Dravida fortress? Will Tamil Nadu remain an India bastion? Who is the DMK's challenger this time? AI DMK or BJP? I'm joined by two senior journalists from Chennai, G C Shekha and Narayan Lakshman, the political, uh, the editor opinion at the Hindu. I appreciate both of you joining us. Narayan, to you first. What's your sense? When I was in Chennai and then Coimbatore. I got a sense that the opposition vote could well get split between the BJP and AI DMK, and that is to the advantage of the DMK, even though there is some creeping anti-incumbency against the government. Yes, actually, that's a distinct possibility of the vote split happening. But you have to think about who are the supporters of each of these parties. And for the AI DMK, it's traditionally been a coalition of different castes. Of course. Uh, they draw strongly from the Tevar community, uh, but they even have Dalits, uh, and they have uh, you know women who vote strongly for the AI DMK as well. Are these groups likely to migrate to the BJP? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, that really depends on what uh, voters end up thinking at a broad level of the BJP as a party mm -hmm. that represents maybe certain castes, upper castes, or does it represent a broader section in its Tamil Nadu version? So uh, it's it's going to be interesting to wait and see how how split this vote is. Uh, my sense is that the ADMK is not out of the reckoning by a long stretch. Uh, I know a lot of people have kind of uh, kind of pushed it a bit more to the background in their analysis and uh, brought the BJP in. And it, there, there is a possibility of a surprise. But if you think of the traditional um, you know, approach of the AI DMK, like the DMK in terms of grassroots mobilization at the village at the village level, district level, and so on, they are still masters at that game in whichever pockets of the state they are. And of course, in Taney and parts mm -hmm. of the South, they are strong. They are less strong in the you know northwestern parts of the state. But uh, having said that, um, I, I do feel, that, as I said, it's mainly between the DMK and the ADMK, but the BJP it's could surprise us. The BJP could surprise the GC Shekhar surprise in terms of vote share is the is the sense or surprise in terms of seats. A party with four percent vote share last time can it go cross twenty percent to actually begin become, become a contender for seats? Is the BJP's yeah. target really increasing vote share this time? Yeah, the vote share is bound to go up because uh, uh, Anna Malai and his team have worked very hard in the last two years, uh, but. Uh, a few sh seats are up for the taking. I am sure that uh, I strongly feel that Annamala himself will uh, succeed in Coimbatore. And there are a few seats like uh, uh, Thani, where the TTV the Nakaran is contesting. Tenka, see, I mean, uh, Tirnal Valley, where uh, Naina Nagendran is a very strong candidate. Uh, so I think, uh, the, and then Darbapuri, where Anbumani Ramadas' wife, uh, she is contesting. So wherever the candidates are a bit strong, I think the BJP front may even right. uh, pick up those seats. So you will, I see uh, definitely around 15% uh, and above in vote share and maybe three to five seats for the BJP. Uh, that is my reading as far as uh, uh, the, the latest survey uh, by one of the leading uh, weekly uh, mm -hmm. that has happened. So I think uh, Anamalai's hard work will pay off to some extent uh, during this Lok Sabha elections. There is one factor, though, Narayan Lakshman, which also struck me, which is the woman factor. You know, uh, 
Just one statistic, 43% of all women working in industries in the country come from Tamil Nadu. And some of the schemes of the DMK clearly aimed at women have worked to an extent. There is also no Jailalita factor this time, which used to attract women to the AI DMK. Could the woman voter become key in Tamil Nadu yet again this time, but this time in favor of the DMK? Absolutely, Rajdeep. I think uh, to understand how women vote, it's very important, again, to go back to the history of welfare politics in Tamil Nadu. Uh, the intervention, for example, such as the Moon Meal Scheme, was actually designed to improve the calorific uh, you know, stock or inventory that the uh, that the household had. So you're looking at microeconomic behavior here, and whatever the household was losing in terms of the men going out there and drinking, let's say through the alcohol, the prohibition policy, which allowed certain kinds of uh, local alcohol, the state tried to supplement that by putting nutrition back, literally into the, into the onto the family table or uh, into the fa family's hands through women. So women have greatly been at the forefront of Dravidian politics as the primary recipients of this these mass welfare schemes. And to date, like you said just now, the DMK is seen as the primary vehicle of it because for other reasons, the, the fact of uh, EPS being a very successful governor, governing uh, you know, head of the state, uh, but failing to control his carders in the sense of being able to mount an effective challenge to the DMK, that has undermined them. But as far as what does the Dravidian movement stand for? How does it support families? What does it do for women? I think it is still seen as the main vehicle for those, uh, those uh, trends and women will probably flock to the DMK. That would be my guess as someone who's looked at the history of policies of the Dravidian movement. On the other hand, there's the Modi factor, G.C. Shekhar. He was yet again in Chennai today, another roadshow. He's got rallies tomorrow, seventh visit in the last two months. There's no other state that the Prime Minister has visited more often than Tamil Nadu in the last two months. He's obviously seen something. Mr. Modi wouldn't go into a state unless he thought that there was a real opportunity available there. Is there a Modi factor? Because on the ground, you don't sense that enthusiasm, frankly, for Mr. Modi that I sense when I'm in North India. Yeah, different, uh, definitely Modi's uh, image has had taken a beating ahead of the 2019 election because there was a systematic anti-Modi campaign uh, by the DMK and its allies. Uh, I think that is one reason why the D BJP front performed very poorly in the 2019 Lok Sabha elections in Tamil Nadu. I think Modi has uh, attempted in a big way to correct that. He has made a lot of visits. He had had his Kasi Tamil Sangagamam, uh, two chapters of that. And then he has had, uh, in Gujarat, he has had a similar Tamar Sangabhav. He has made repeated, uh, it's, it's, I have, in your program, I heard that uh, Modi is coming here only uh, during election time. No, it's not It's not correct. He has come even before election time. He has had, uh, he has inaugurated many projects here. In fact, if you, if you see in the last two years, after Stalin became chief minister, I think he had made three, four visits, and the two of them have appeared together on the same stage, inaugurating projects. So it's not as if he comes only during election times. Of course, during this election time, he has paid a lot more attention to Tamil Nadu by, repeat, by covering the entire geography uh, of the state. Uh, so it's not as if that, uh, I, I'm sure that uh, he is given equal importance to Kerala as well, because I think uh, BJP is taking these two uh, states, which it considers as the last frontiers in the South, uh, very seriously this time. Yep. I think it falls into a pattern uh, that uh, the BJP wants to make a, its presence felt in Tamil Nadu and in Kerala, and it really wants to make a dent into the Dravidian vote base. Definitely, yes. One final question, Narayan Lakshman. There's so much talk of a north-south divide that effectively uh, the BJP still remains a dominant party in northern India, is still finding its feet in the south. Do you believe this 2024 election could perhaps... Uh, Give us a sense of just how far the BJP has reached in breaching uh, these southern citadels of strong regional parties. Uh, do you believe that that is really why this election in Tamil Nadu has captured the interest? The BJP, can it breach this southern citadel? Look, Ajit, I think uh, this is where as journalists we try and, uh, you know, sift the hype from the reality and the reality, of course, partly revealed by poll results, but partly also by just getting out there on the ground like you've been doing and talking to people on the streets. And 
Look, let's look at several things. On the one hand, they have the BJP has and its allies have concertedly tried to get into the state. They've done so, for example, even through the RSS, by the way, which never features in these conversations, but is quietly working at the village level to promote Hindu festivals, temple worship, idol worship, and all those things. So they are working on a very, very multi-election, multi-generational transformation effect. But at the same time, what has happened in two terms of the BJP, a decade of rule, is that the lines, the battle lines have been drawn ever more clearly in terms of federalism, in terms of the tussle that states have with the center. And honestly, the difficulty that certain non-BJP ruled states have had with in dealing with the center, not only in terms of getting their share of resources, let's say for flood assistance and so on, but also in terms of the, you know, the, the what some people have called the mischief that governors are playing in these states. It has wreaked right. havoc in terms of neat and it's called, un, it's caused uh, untold misery to individuals and families. Right. So I think that this is, uh, that, that that really tells you which way this battle is going and people are going to deliver the final blow to, to see their view on that i think you made an interesting point not so much north versus south that's the sense i got it is more about federalism and pitting delhi in a way against opposition ruled states how will that play out could well make a critical difference in a state like tamil nadu for now gc shaker naran lakshman for sharing your knowledge with us thank you so much for joining thank me you. here on this news today tamil nadu special a rather big story in a huge setback to Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. The Delhi High Court today upheld the Chief Minister's arrest and valid and legal. Dismissing Kejriwal's plea, the court made some very scathing observations, saying the Delhi Chief Minister conspired and was involved in taking kickbacks. It also had some strong words for Arvind Kejriwal over approver statements and his charge of his arrest being politically timed to suit the elections. Take a look. Arvind Kejriwal's arrest by the Enforcement Directorate is legal. That is what the Delhi High Court has ruled. Dismissing a plea filed by the Delhi Chief Minister in the excise policy case, the Delhi High Court has some very scathing observations. The court said that Arvind Kejriwal was involved in two capacities in the Liquor Gate scam, in a personal capacity in formulating the excise policy as the national convener of the Aam Aadmi Party. It also said that he conspired with others and was involved in taking kickbacks. The court also came down heavily on Kejriwal, questioning approver statements and declared that who gives tickets and who purchases bonds is not the court's concern. An observation directed at liquor gate accused turn approvers in the case. The Delhi High Court also said that it won't lay down different categories of law, one for common citizens and other for granting special privileges for a chief minister. Soon after the verdict, the BJP hit out at Arvind Kejriwal. मुझे दूसरे को गलत साबित करना इसलिए मैंने कहा कि वह अहंकार चूर चूर हो गया है नाम तो आम दीवाने आम और चाहते हैं कि डील किया जाए दीवाने खास की तरह तो यह खासो खुसूस खासियत पूरी तरीके से खारिज कर दी गई कोर्ट के द्वारा Sources have told India today that the आम आदमी पार्टी is likely to move the Supreme Court against Kejriwal's arrest ये मामला हिंदुस्तान के इतिहास का सबसे बड़ा राजनीतिक षड्यंत्र है दिल्ली और पंजाब की दो सरकारों को नष्ट करने का कुचलने का खत्म करने का एक बड़ा षड्यंत्र है दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट ऑब्जर्वेशन वर्क क्लियर टू ऑन ब्रिंग पॉलिटिक्स टू कोर्ट the case is not between the center and the aam aadmi party but given that the general elections are just around the corner political fireworks on the issue are only going to explode with shrishti ojha shreya chatterji and amit bhardwaj in new delhi bureau report india today quick update on what else is making the headlines today in an exclusive interview to india today home minister arvind uh, amit shah came down heavily on mr kejriwal saying kejriwal has been unmasked after the high court upheld his ed arrest
EC has also issued a notice to Congress leader Radhip Surjewala for his comments against BJP's Hema Malini. EC had sought a response by April 11 to allegedly sexist comments. Maharashtra Vikas Agadi has finally sealed a seat-sharing deal. The Shiv Sena UBT will contest a majority of the seats there of 21. Congress will fight on 17. Sharad Pawar's NCP on 10. It's Thakre versus Thakre in Maharashtra. Just days ahead of Lok Sabha polls, Raj Thakre's Maharashtra Navnirman Sena has declared unconditional support to the BJP. A showdown has erupted over Akhilesh Yadav's uh, meeting Mukhtar Ansari's family. The BJP has accused Akhilesh of trying to turn India into Pakistan, adding the SP chief visit to Ansari's house was politically motivated. We'll have plenty more on elections unlocked. That's coming up at 10.30 p.m. tonight. That's all that we could pack in on the show today. We'll have plenty more as always, of course, tomorrow night. For now, stay well, stay safe. Good night. Shubhratri, Jai Hind, Namaskar, Nandri, as they would say in Tamil Nadu.